bad as everybody thinks they are they're coming right slowly but surely their tails still miss a little bit of fur and there's a few little scabby patches but otherwise they're doing okay and you can see they're doing their best to control the mite by grooming effectively and trying to keep everything under control as much as possible so lots of grooming lots of cleaning um, you can see they've also gone and lay now right with mom and there's a lot of kind of tucking up together and it's all very social this morning it's funny to watch them it's a little bit of moist air and a bit of wet grass and they turn into these big softies that all have to kind of groom each other and even the females have been at each other and grooming and just kind of all cuddling up together so the entire pride is here it doesn't look like it but that's most of the cubs are the female and then to the right of that is the two adult females that are just sitting and also grooming themselves so there we go that's the entire pride all together and they've made their way surprise surprise into a black monkey orange thicket as these cats tend to love to do i don't know why the leopards and lions love going into these monkey orange thickets they just do for some reason and it really is difficult viewing when they're inside these thickets we can't see too much now i would imagine that this pride is not going to be here for too long because the sun is starting to warm up quite quickly now and that means that they're going to have to start heading into some sort of shade and where they are right now there's going to be very little shade in this particular section they're gonna to have to find themselves somewhere else and I think we're in for quite a warm day given that there is not a breath of wind there is no clouds to speak of and the Sun like I say is starting to get a lot warmer it's starting to feel like a hot spring Sun as opposed to what we've been having over the last few days which is this cold dreary windy gusty cloudy weather so it's nice to feel spring in the air again and the bit of moisture makes it feel even more springy than before but i've been loving watching these cubs how they just kind of sandwich themselves in there's no grace about it everybody's got to go in and there's even one that's trying to suckle mom's just kicked it in the face though and said no you will not suckle you are too old for that so instead it's now lying on top of mom and is just basically grooming itself on top of her so she's in for very little rest this morning i'm gonna just try to go for Proud cat mama, you want to know if lions sleep as much as domestic cats. Well, lions are kings of sleepers, sleeping. They can sleep up to 20 hours in a 24-hour period. So they do know how to rest and they do know how to sleep when they need to. But obviously it's dependent on what goes on. So if there is opportunities to hunt, they'll certainly take them. If there's any opportunity to kind of get food or to move or if they need water, they will. So... I suppose 20 hours is a, is a maximum number, but yes, they do sleep just as much as domestic cats, if not more than domestic cats would. They need to conserve their energy because when they are active, you must remember, lions consume a huge amount of energy hunting things like buffalo and wildebeest and zebra. Those are big animals. It's physical. It takes a lot out of them, and so they need to conserve that energy. They need to wait until they can get a meal. Also, remember, lions are not feeding nearly as frequently as maybe something like a leopard. Leopards will be able to feed on franklins and birds and mongoose and scrub hares as they go along and that sustains them. But these guys, a, a, a mongoose between all of this will just be a mess and end up with just a couple injuries on each other's faces as they fight over it. So they require much larger animals which takes a lot of energy and, and it's not always easy to come by. And in fact at this time of the year and we know that the buffalo have not really been around and so it's been tough for them to find meals big enough to sustain a group of hungry going growing cubs and so you know they need to conserve their energy rest try and take it easy for as long a period as possible try and really kind of sustain themselves and sustain the food source that they've got prior and utilize that for as long as possible and then obviously catch what they need so lots of sleeping and lots of relaxing before then getting into things and starting to actually hunt and to start going after them quite extensively and try and actually sort of get food and get the nutrients that they need and so periods of rest followed by very high active periods is how it normally goes but it's amazing to see just how much they've groomed themselves today it's, it's been a situation where they've been non-stop since i've been here there's been licking and grooming and that's part of the reason why their coats look as bad as they do is because it's excessive grooming that they're doing it's excessive scratching 
which causes the scabbing to form and so that's why they look a bit patchy so it's remember that their tongues are rough they have those little hooks on them and, and their claws are sharp and so when they scratch and lick and do what they're doing now for such long periods of time that's why they end up with little patches that have got no fur and, and, and basically have scabbed from rawness from being licked too much and groomed too much so it's tough for them but at the end of the day they will come right if you look at the lionesses most of them are looking okay there's the older female still showing some signs of it which is the female where they are currently and where they're grooming she still shows some sign of mange that one on the left hand side and she's the oldest of the lot so eventually it'll come right but i'm loving this cub that's busy grooming on top of her i'll just go forward so that senzo can see her slightly better there we go senzo is that better for you a little bit more there we go so you'll see that this one has decided that's mom's head that it's busy grooming on top of it's decided that is exactly where i want to clean myself you, she didn't want to let me suckle so now i'm going to groom on top of you and make sure that you are get thoroughly upset with me eventually we're going to find that lioness is going to just lift her head probably cry a little bit and that will be the end of this game but for now there we go <laughs> For now, though, it's all about just loving mom. John, are you asking if the predator eats a prey animal with mange? Could the predator get it? Yes, that's most certainly possible. Remember that mange is occurring in the coat. And so if a predator kills a, another animal with mange, that mite is all over that fur. And it's going to then transfer from that animal onto the predator that's feeding off it and so it's very possible for them to contract mange via that way and and they do and it does spread that way so um it, it's something that you know obviously you've got to be careful for predators but generally you'll find that these guys are very seldom targeting mangy animals just because they're normally trying to to get the best food that they can out of things and and they do target sick and weak individuals from time to time but mange really only presents itself heavily in antelope species right at the end of the drought and and or end of the dry season and generally by then these animals are trying to target you know the the buffalo that have weakened through then and it's very seldom they're going to go after something like a kudu or an impala that's mangy they rather go after things that are weaker like buffalo that have that have not fed and grazed as well as they should so you don't often see them eating mangy animals and in fact in my time i've only seen one kudu being fed off that was mangy otherwise the rest of the time they're pretty much going after more healthier individuals i wonder if they know it and they kind of see that coat and they're like no let's stay clear of that I'm not sure it's interesting maybe they see it and they it's a visual cue that there's something wrong and that they don't feed off it for that reason but like i say in my time i've only ever seen one kudu that was mangy being fed on and i've seen a number of different mangy antelope species out here and, and antelope moving around i've even seen dead ones that the vultures were the only ones that ate it funny enough they were, even the hyenas left it alone so it's interesting how there's a little difference between kind of meat and and how these predators perceive certain food sources most of the time you'd find a lion would run past a kudu or run into a kudu and feed off it straight away whereas this particular kudu carcass lion and leopard and hyenas all walked past it and didn't feed off it for two days so it was only the vultures that eventually ate it and consumed it which is really odd Hmm, Abigail from Canada. What are the only things lions will not eat? Um, very little. If it's made of meat, they eat it. Um, I've seen them kill hyenas and not eat them. So generally they don't eat other predators too much. I mean, obviously there has been reported cases of male lions eating other male lions or cubs and even females eating their own cubs and, and to redigest that nutrient so they do sometimes eat themselves but they not commonly um, also hyenas I've never seen them actually actively feeding off a hyena carcass they tend to just kill them and leave them um, other than that very little they'll pretty much eat everything else I've seen them eating termites before I've seen them eating snakes I've seen them eating everything that you can probably think of they've eaten so it's it's really there's not much that's off the menu for lions when lions are hungry they will devour whatever they can meat is meat 
and nutrients is nutrients and so if they can get nutrients they certainly will try their very best to get as much out of it as possible and if that's the form of a tortoise or a lizard or a snake or an insect or whatever the case may be they certainly will try and go after it so it's an interesting kind of thing is that predators don't really want to have a situation where they're going to pass up on a meal so they will try their very very best to get as much food as possible and to be able to then consume it as far as long as possible so you do find that these guys are going after a lot of different meals and lions in particular will scavenge off dead carcasses and so they'll eat hippo and elephant and anything really that is dead out here is very fair game bar hyenas and maybe other predators to some degree but even then I have seen them go after honey badgers and eat them I've seen them eating white-tailed mongoose which are small carnivores banded mongoose dwarf mongoose so they will eat those smaller carnivores it's just typically things like hyenas and, and leopard and lions, not really. But they are pretty much predators and, and they eat a lot of meat and food. And so, you well, know, I suppose, like I say, if it's, if it's edible, they'll go off. Well, if it's meat that's fresh enough, they'll eat it. Even then, though, they still do eat quite rotten stuff as well. I've seen them eating a giraffe that was fallen in the sand river. And the giraffe was so rotten that the meat was actually almost liquid and green in coloration. Yet they still fed off it. Kirsty, you want to know how long lions can live without food? Well, it's, it's obviously a dependent thing. Toasty, ah, uh, toasty, toasty, sorry, toasty. Um, it depends, it's obviously a variable thing on what they had before, but theoretically after about two weeks, you would find lions will be so emaciated and weak that finding food would be very difficult unless they stumbled on something that had died and they were able to eat off that and come right. 